my name is Diana Gonzalez. I am the campaign manager of the Trains Before Towers Coalition. Rethink Albany, Rethink Penn Station, Tri-State Transportation Campaign, every community board member and community folks who've been there here since day one, leaves everyone who've been fighting this plan, because this is not a good plan. Look, we all know that traveling through Penn Station is a hellhole. And in a first-class city, we should have a world-class transportation hub. This plan is not it. We all agree, all the elected officials who work to change this plan agree this is a terrible plan. And this is a message to Governor Hochul. Postpone the vote in, ju in July. We want to see the financials. Uh, Layla and so many other leaders have pointed this out from day one. The financing is beyond vague. The IBO and the recent study, Sam and other organizations just conducted with, I believe, the new school, I don't know if I got that right, show you that we, the financing plan will be on the back of taxpayers. That's the last thing we need. And exactly, Judy. And the next thing we need to also acknowledge is this is not a transportation plan. It's a development plan by one developer. We don't need 10 office buildings. I'm not saying that there's no need for some office buildings, Class A and Case B. We also do not need eminent domain. There is a way to recreate Penn Station for a grand way for every New Yorker and commuter to enjoy by building underneath, by doing through running, by many of these groups have been pushing from day one, which we should do like Pittsburgh and Paris. We deserve a first class transportation hub and this plan is simply not it. Secondly, on housing, it promises us sprinkles, sprinkles of housing, if it's ever gonna happen in section 1A, which comes way later. We remember when, when this happened the last time and people are so upset by it. We can't let that mistake happen again. We need real, affordable, middle-class housing like Penn South. We need supportive housing, and we need it financed by this plan. Yeah. These activists have been talking about this from day one, and it is curious why we're all against this plan, yet they continue to try to move it forward. We defeated the West Side Stadium ages ago, we're going to defeat this current plan. Right. If it takes us any way to do it, and I hope the governor and her staff, many who I know, are listening today. We do not want to displace the residents and the businesses. Yes. There's a way to do this without doing that. And we all know it's true. We know that we can create a grand Penn Station without giving a tax giveaway to one developer. 
And the only way we're going to stop it is by working together in a broad, diverse coalition. We have to make sure the street states are pedestrian friendly. Right now, it's a mess. We have to make sure folks value the pedestrian. We have to make sure the Penn Station is built up and Madison Square Garden must be in the equation. I know people say, that's impossible. I believe in the impossible. We need to move Madison Square Garden to fulfill and build a real Penn Station. That is the only way we're going to do it. That's the only way. There's no excuses. And I know it won't be easy. Nothing in life is ever easy, but worth it. I don't know if I left anything out, but I want to thank all the activists. I want to thank the community board four and five. I may have missed a point or two, but I'm human. I just want to say thank you for this opportunity to join you today. Thank you for the invitation. I hope we can work together to stop this plan because it is not a transportation plan. It's a real estate development plan. One plan that we do not need in New York City right now. Thank you. Thank you, Tony. All right, next I would like to introduce Sam Turby, the co-chair of the Empire State Coalition. Sam, take it away. Thank you, everybody, for being here this beautiful summer day. Uh, Sam Turby, I'm the chairperson of Rethink NYC, and I'm the co-coordinator with Lynn Ellsworth of the Empire Station Coalition, which is a group of approximately 15 community organizations and civic organizations in the area. We include amongst our ranks Penn South, and the Union Square people are probably joining us. And as many of you know, these block associations are almost the equivalent of nation states. There is no financial plan coming to us from the governor. There is no transit plan coming to us from the governor. There is no station plan coming to us from the governor, except for 18 escalators, 10 elevators, and a 40 foot wide skylight that they're gonna stuff between Tupan Plaza and Madison Square Garden. And they're trying to claim that we need to demolish a neighborhood in order to create this really mediocre non-train facility. This is a developer plan, and even that is only for one developer. What this adds up to is highly inequitable, and that's a word I want people to start using because it's a word that is important to our city, state, local, and federal officials. This plan is inequitable. It is an assault on this neighborhood, city, state, and region. This plan is an inversion of the public trust, and that is obvious from all the articles today about the finances and the impact that campaign contributions had on this plan. So today is mostly about numbers. Others will cover many details of this. I will focus on three numbers, more on the expense side, to give you a sense that even the numbers that are being reported probably are worse than they are being reported. The first thing I can tell you is they would like to demolish this block, part of this block, and part of the other block to expand Penn Station South at a cost of $18 billion. What Tony was referring to through running, that is a streamlined modern operating model used throughout major European cities, whereby you could accomplish all your capacity needs for Penn Station in this building and this building with absolutely no need to demolish this wonderful part of our city. In order, to implement, in order to implement through running, and we're using their numbers, it would cost $9.75 billion. The last time I was here, I told you I'm not the greatest at math. But the $18 billion they want to send to destroy our city and the fabric of our neighborhood, they don't have to do it all, and they can save billions of dollars by implementing through running. The dated terminal model that they want to utilize will just continue concentration in Manhattan. It will not create the kind of cityscapes that we like. What they are proposing to do is the epitome of throwing good money after bad. Now, what are some other things we can tell you about that? The numbers behind the numbers. When they want to demolish below here, they want to put deep tunnels in over here. That is where the city has the biggest cost overruns you can think of. The 7th Avenue extended, the number 7 train extension, uh, the 2nd Avenue subway, and other things the MTA done does usually run four or five times what they're predicting. So take $18 billion and multiply it times four. The $9.75 billion that we're talking about here, they are much better and come in much closer to budget when you're talking about lighter fare, less imposing infrastructure projects. 
they have to know this. The multiplier between what it would be cost to do a modern, streamlined transit plan and this monstrosity is huge. What other funny math should you know about? It cost one and a half billion dollars to renovate that station. They say it's going to cost six to seven billion dollars to renovate this station and still keep it underground. Why? Alex Washburn is the leader on this and we'll say it later. When you're trying to build a train station under a basketball arena, it can cost you a multiple of three, four, and five times as much. So if we move Madison Square Garden, yes, it will be expensive, but it will be that much cheaper to build a real station here. And moving Madison Square Garden and building a real train station here will be an investment in the public realm, yes. not a giveaway, not a giveaway to tornado shareholders that benefits almost none of us. Now, while we're talking numbers, I do need to get into intangibles because I'm not that great at math. What are the intangible costs, or put another way, and I want to keep coming back to this word, what are the equities? Who loses? All of us lose, but particularly thousands of local residents, small businesses, a group of Capuchin friars. They will not only lose everything, but they are effectively being terrorized by the ESD and its minions. And I want to emphasize that we're terrorized. Steve, Gene, the people who live on that block, do you feel like you're being terrorized by this project? Yes, yes or no? Yes. Matt Gates at the ESD. The ESD is terrorizing this neighborhood and the citizens of New York. They are actually threatening us with homelessness every second that this plan is in effect. Oh, Steve, I got a time limit. <laughs> Matt Gates at the ESD calls this neighborhood a junkyard. I, 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 a public official calling this neighborhood a junkyard. Jane Jacobs, Roberta Gratz, and so many others call this a great multi-use neighborhood. Steven Spielberg, in his reasoned version of West Side Story, includes the Gimbal Skybridge proudly in his movie. Why the folks who are promoting this thing don't get that is beyond me. They aren't even humble enough with all this destruction to figure out how to preserve that sky bridge, which Christopher Gray, formerly of the New York Times, says is the Chartres Cathedral of sky bridges. The ESD will pay a premium for a lousy and highly destructive deal, which only Steve Roth sees as a promised land for his shareholders. We in this coalition, personally and otherwise, have a very different definition of what constitutes a promised land and what constitutes a junkyard. And yes, we don't see this neighborhood as a junkyard or as a chew toy for latter-day urban renewal adventurists. It is a living, breathing neighborhood, and it needs to be embraced, not discarded. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sam. Next up, we have Charles Kahn, the organizing director of Strong Economy for All. Um, so, uh, I think highly unequitable is a good way to describe this deal. Um, but I think another word that we can use to describe this deal is a scam, right? This deal is a scam. And when you think about a scam, you're like, why? They won't tell us what's in the deal, but we know it's going to cost us a ton of money. They won't promise us affordable housing. They won't promise the, the, the services that we need in this community, but we know the one thing that's promised is a billion dollar tax subsidy for Stephen Ross, right? And so what we're watching unfold is a slow motion train wreck. What we're watching unfold is our tax dollars going up in smoke. Because every New Yorker here is gonna pay to kick people out of their neighborhood. They're gonna pay to give a billion dollar subsidy to a billionaire. And at the end of the day, Penn Station's still not gonna get fixed. What they continue to do is dangle carrots in front of our face. Oh, you may get some affordable housing. Oh, Penn Station may be better, right? It won't be hell to walk through Penn Station in the middle of summer. They dangle all of these things that people want in front of them, but we, won't, we don't get those things. That's not what we get. What we get are 10 super high office towers, right? Which is gonna do Penn Station a lot of good. Which is gonna do people in this neighborhood so much good. And we know the deal is bad. The biggest way to tell if an Empire State development deal is bad is are they willing to show you the math? The first thing that my math teacher taught me in elementary school was show your work. That is how you know if your, your answer is correct. That is how you know if you're going in the right direction. And they've 
do not want to show us the work. And it's not because they don't know what the work is, it's because they know that it's unpopular. They want to wait until the last minute. Here, take a look at this. It's 200 pages long. We're voting in 10 minutes. That is what they want to unfold. And that is what we cannot allow to happen. And the last thing I do want to say about Madison Square Garden is Madison Square does need to move, but it's not expensive because we don't need to pay for it. James Dolan makes money hand over fist at Madison Square Garden. He has billions of dollars of his own money. No so when we, tax. so when we, well, they paid zero property tax. They've never paid property tax in New York City or New York State. And so Madison Square Garden does have to move, and we don't have to pay for it. Let James Dolan pay for his own state. Thank you. Yeah.
as insubstantial, insanitary, substandard, and covered with blight. That is ridiculous. These are vibrant, diverse, eclectic blocks full of homes and businesses and jobs, and full of historic buildings that deserve to be on the state and national register of historic places. So all our groups have different issues. This is ours. We should not be talking about eminent domain. How many of your neighbors have told you that what the city needs is an even larger Hudson Yards? No. This, oh. needs to be brought back. Yes. this needs to be brought back to the city level and let the city determine what, if anything, happens in this area. And the state has other ways to pay for an approved Penn Station, which the public certainly deserves. Thank you. Thank you, Peg. Uh, next up, we have Alexandra's Washburn of the Grand Penn Community Alliance. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. I'm Alexandros Washburn. I'm from the Grand Penn Community Alliance, grandpenn.org. We want to see a great station, a great public space. And I'm here to talk about the elephant in the room. By that, I mean Madison Square Garden. I want to give you a fact, not an opinion. It's a physical fact. You cannot have a great Penn Station with Madison Square with Madison Square Garden squatting on top of it. That's right. yeah. you know? And you cannot also, in fairness, have a great Madison Square Garden with Penn Station squished underneath it. Yeah. We've got to separate these two from this plan. This plan doesn't address that. This plan leaves the garden. We will never have a great Penn Station if we let the garden stay. There is less than one year till the special permit expires. That's a city council purview. That decides the fate of where this goes next, and it's moved five times in its career. It used to be on Madison Square. It used to have a garden on top. It can move again. Let me let me tell you one one other thing that sort of gives you my history here and why why I think this. I'm the guy Senator Moynihan sent to New York to build Moynihan Train Hall. I'm the founding president of the Pennsylvania Station Redevelopment Corporation, which is an ESD subsidiary. I got a GPP back in my day. I know how it works. I know where the power is. And I also know that the job of Moynihan Train Hall is not finished until the whole Penn Station is finished. We want something as good or better than that for everyone, not just for Amtrak. Yeah. And Moynihan, I'll tell you one other thing. Moynihan told me, Penn Station, Alex, Penn Station is a fat dolphin in a sea of sharks. Watch out. Watch out for the private sector. They will take a piece of it. So let's come together. Let's be clear about what we want, about the quality we want. And let's demand the best from our governor. No rancor, no vindictiveness just the need for energy in the executive and to push for what we can have and deserve. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Alex. Thank you, Alexandros. And next we have the Land Use Chair of Community Board 5, Layla Law Gasico. Layla! 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 Thank you guys so much. Thank you. It's really good to be here and it's such great company. Thank you to all the activists and, uh, you know, groups and people who have been, uh, you know, fighting this fight for the past two years. We started, we were a little lonely and I can't tell you how happy and thrilled I am to see this huge, broad coalition here today continuing to fight. And let me make it very, very clear, and I'm speaking on behalf of Community Board 5, our resolve is intact. Yeah. We are going to continue to fight. Right. This plan has zero support from anyone, no support. anyone other though than those who have to benefit financially from it. Community groups, transportation groups, preservation groups, urban planning groups, neighbors, residents, businesses, everybody is opposed to this plan. So 
Let's make it very clear to the governor, to Senator Comrie, who sits on the Public Authorities Control Board, to Assemblymember Colin, who also sits on the EACB. We oppose this plan. So now let me tell you something. I am a member of the CAGWA, the Community Advisory Committee Working Group, a branch of ESD that provides community engagement on this plan. Because I'm on this, plan, on this board, I'm actually on gag order. Technically, I'm not supposed to be here. Technically, I'm not allowed to talk to you because that's, that's the way ESD conducts business, in secrecy. The secrecy has to stop. We need transparency. ESD has refused to give us financial information. We need this financial information to figure out if indeed this plan has merits. Right now, they tell us it does. We don't know. What we think and what every independent group confirms is that this plan is going to be a money pit. It is going to taxpayer money to Vornado for nothing. Let me make it clear, for nothing. It's not like we're giving money to Vornado and in exchange we're getting Penn Station. We are just giving money, plain and simple. This is a money pit. So, what do we need? We need information, we need transparency. We need it in a timely fashion. Let me break another news. The directors of ESD are going to vote on this plan next week, seven days from now. And do you know what? We still don't have the plan. The plan will be released maybe the day before. They are going to give us literally 24 hours to review, let me guess, 2,000 pages of documents. And then they're going to tell us, well, yeah, trust us, it's okay. It works, it adds up. No time for proper evaluation. No time for critical uh, review of their data. This is not the way we do business in this city and in this state. This is unacceptable. So I am urging you today to pick up your phone, get your computer, your iPhone, whatever method of communication you use, email, text, call, let the governor know, let the directors of ESC know, let the public authorities know, you oppose this plan. Tell them that this plan is going to be a liability, a financial liability to the state of New York. We cannot support it. What we support is actually true infrastructure. But let me break the news to you. How do we fund infrastructure? Not by huge corporate giveaways. We fund infrastructure with appropriations. This is how we know we are truly committed to what we say we're committed to. So we want money from the budget into fixing Penn Station. We want money from the federal government to fix Penn Station. We deserve it. This is the largest transit hub in the Western Hemisphere. So let's all get together. Let's really continue this big push. And please, next week, Thursday, July 21st, let's all convene again because this is the day the ESD directors are scheduled to vote on this plan. We need once again to let them know we oppose this plan unequivocally. Thank you. And Steve Marshall, as always, has all the information right here. Right here. Take it up from him. Thank you. Who wants to call? Thank you, Layla. Right now. According to the latest report, this is going to give a $1.2 billion tax break to Vornado. Every dollar of that is a dollar that's not spent on improving our transit. So say it with me. Trains before towers. 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 Trains before towers.